just want to correct myself. Uh, Plato, we, uh, me, uh, just uh, checked, and in the paper of uh, Young and Mills, why it is not cited, I said please, but he was not I mean, I have to recheck it, but it seems, seems not. So I was, in, I was wrong. So now we engage. The infinitesimal constants A become the infinitesimal fields A of X. And the variation, you know that is always the variation of the derivative of the of the wave function which uh, uh, is passing in the gauge procedure, so uh, or which destroys the invariance, the variation of the gradient of the vector field psi of x is equal to i epsilon a of x ta, the generators. Uh, parenthesis partial i of xi um, of x. Well, and now plus the term which violates the uh, gauge invariance, namely the gradients, and this is always what we will uh, recover again and again in all gauge theories. The gauge function the has what we have first derivatives of them times T A right to the head of the sign So this is uh, this delta E epsilon term violating And now we do it like we did it in the electromagnetic field. We make an Einsatz. We have a new gauge potential. Well, as I said, uh, Young Mills called it B. We call it um, A with the following description for the variation that the variation of the i, which is always a co-vector here, a i, and here the parameters, of course, the two parameters, b, which is going of the number of two parameters, the dimension of the group, which is 3 in the case of SU2, is equal to partial i of epsilon b, Plus, and now we have this term which produces the incommensionality, um, um, epsilon a of now the joint uh, representation of generator a, and by the b and c. So this is a new gauge potential, A, which we introduce. So if we re-express that, we have partial AIB is equal partial I A B plus we can introduce the structure for example here, C B C I just exploit the joint representation times E A times A C I. This is a variation. And we can then, in the usual way, uh, introduce the gauge covariant derivative. Gauge covariant derivative. This is the capital D, for instance, 
in order to remind ourselves that it's with respect to the gauge potential of I, uh, A, the main denoted by the A, uh, I applied to the negative of psi is the partial I applied to the metaphor minus I A B I times generator B e, e, so this is our new page covariant derivative, which we have to substitute at the place in the Lagrangian where the first derivatives occur. And then, if we have this, then the variation. We have no longer the variation of the partial derivative, which produces this violating term, which is now sort of compensated by this term, which we have here. This is the origin of this term. So we have then that the variation, which you can verify by exploiting this formula of the gauge covariant derivative i of psi and this is in order to make it clear what is meant is minus um, epsilon a times the generators da times the covariant derivative bi and again we have now uh, to use the uh, that um, to introduce the curl of the gauge potential, that is the commutator. So we take two of these covariant uh, derivatives and commute them, applied to the metaphor of psi, and we find this is just simple uh, algebra, which uh, is not too difficult to verify minus i times t c and now we get here the new gauge field strengths f c i j uh, you know like in electromagnetism uh, but in electromagnetism you one is a one dimension proof we have no index here because it's just to be you know, uh, because we have only one component but here we have of course three components uh, C runs over the dimension of the group from 1 to 3. And so this is our new gauge covariant derivative applied to psi. And by uh, uh, spelling out the parentheses, we can determine the F C I J to be partial I times A C J minus partial J A C I. And now we have the, uh, the structure constants plus the structure constants C A B times A A I A B J. So uh, this is a gauge field state, <coughs> and it's the analog of the gauge field strength in Maxwell's theory. But Maxwell's theory, being a U1 gauge theory, rests on a commutative group. And so we only get these first two pieces. The structures for the constants in, in U1 are zero. Here, SU2 is a non-commutative group. We pick out here the product of two A's, and here's a structure constant. Of course, uh, you should uh, recall that this is uh, similar as in the curvature tensor similarity. similarity. 
Leute, die wenn du Körbe schon tänzen. Körbe schon tänzen. In der Menge neu, wenn ich meinen Kater nicht tänze. Eger, so der Körbe schon tänzen. Aal. I don't spell out the indices. It is not good. Is 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 just uh, the partial derivative minus the partial derivative uh, plus gamma times gamma minus gamma times gamma. So the characteristic feature of uh, non-abelian gauge theory are these terms which destroy the linearity of a theory. In electromagnetism, we have only these two terms. And so the theory, if you uh, build out of this a Lagrangian and derive the field equation, you get just um, a wave equation type. Um, but as soon as you pick up here, you get interaction terms. You get the field interacts which is, uh, with itself. So this is what um, what characterizes a non abelian gauge theory. The field <coughs> is charged, you know? The electromagnetic field is uncharged. A photon has no electric charge. Electric charge is zero. But of course, uh, the, gravitation, the graviton has to be gravitationally charged because the graviton um, has a mass or a energy, and the energy is a source of a gravitational field. So it has a gravitational charge. And so it's a nonlinear theory. So general relativity is a nonlinear theory because the field is charged, gravitationally charged. And the Jan Mills theory, and this is also noticed by Jan Mills, and later by Uchiyama pointed out in quite some detail, is a nonlinear theory because the field itself is charged. Uh, uh, so it, this field itself, which is, has isotopic spin. So whereas the electromagnetic field, the photon, has no electric charge, uh, the uh, um, sort of the gluon has an, 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 a strong <coughs> charge, and, and, and by that it becomes automatically a nonlinear theory. So Maxwell's theory is a linear theory. Young Mills theory, general relativity, and gauge theory of gravity, as I know, that are automatically nonlinear theories, which comes just from these two pieces which we have here. So the interaction is, is pretty complicated. But on the other hand side, this interaction is always predetermined. If you have the structure constants, all this can be computed in, in and they are of lower. Uh, derivatives than these. These are the highest derivatives, first derivatives, and these are just algebraic terms which go up to the order um, a to the fourth, as you can see here. Uh, a square, sorry, a square. No, if, if you go in the Lagrangian, in your Mills theory, of course, if you have the Lagrangian, which is uh, f times f, then you have always uh, um, sort of this is this plus gamma square times first derivative of a plus gamma square. So in the Lagrangian, you have pieces which are of fourth order in the gauge potential. So the, they are algebraic uh, terms up to the fourth order. And this turns out also to be uh, true in, in the case theory of gravity, we have uh, a, a, a similar structure. So this is uh, about the charge of the, the gauge theory and the analog with general relativity. Of course, now under 3, 4, I call field equations of Daniel's theory. Conservation laws. Now the Lagrangian, which is the first order Lagrangian, the 
was we have typically a nucleon field or a Dirac type field, and then the last thing on this field, so with the Lagrangian density depends on psi, on the minimally coupled psi field, and on the field strength. Because the AE field is not gauge invariant, it cannot depend, uh, cannot occur explicitly in the Lagrangian. <coughs> but only via this gauge covariant construction of the field strengths. So we have the field strengths. This is the point of our function. So this is the metal field. local gauge invariance as we had at the beginning when we studied uh, uh, the variational principle we have the partial derivative L with respect to the field times I PA of psi plus and then the partial derivative with respect to the velocities partial PI of psi I and A is always the same distribution goes to the side. And now we have, of course, it depends also on F plus partial PL. This is the total of portion, don't forget it. Partial F PIJ times C. Now, what about the gauge Lagrangian? <clears throat> the gauge Lagrangian, we see, we have here already these quantities, which we call in the electromagnetic case by H. H, well, we would call it here B by J. Uh, so, um, we expect that this H is proportional to F, then we have again the F square Lagrangian. So the gauge Lagrangian. So one half of H Dij times F Dij. Now this has to be a kinetic term. I just write it down. One half times the killing metric. I forgot to define the killing metric. G A times F A I J times F E I J. E I J downstairs. Uh, uh, let me uh, um, define the killing metric. The killing metric. Well, you can, it's just a square of the uh, structure constants. You see the structure constants of the uh, commutation relations we have here. It's T A comma T B. I times C A B C times T C. And these structure constants <coughs> If you take a square, you can always uh, kill uh, one of the indices and uh, can define thereby the, uh, I don't know whether I forget the coefficient. I mean, you have a G, I, no, this is a capital G, usually when it takes a killing matrix. Killing was a mathematician who lived in the uh, second part of the 19th century. Um, uh, G, um, A, B is the 
is by definition you take uh, a particular <coughs> factor P, C, you take here A and here B, and then you can take here the C and contract it with this C, and then you can take a B and contract it with this C. Of course, repeatedly this is uh, awesome. And uh, since I forget the factor, I can find it here now uh, with the proportional sign. Uh, and, 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 and so this is the second train. Of course, this runs is a three times three matrix. And incidentally, if the killing matrix is non-degenerate, um, it's called a semi-simple group, and we assume always that we have semi-simple group. If it's non-degenerate, it can be inverted, and you can develop a tensor algebra and that is, uh, for the group, and this is what we need in physics. So it's the same as simple groups, uh, the non-degenerate killing matrix which we uh, use. And if you have the killing matrix, you can now, if you have the, um, the structure constant, say it's um, e, e, C, then you can uh, lower one of those in, uh, in the, in the indices, G times A, and this is a D, and this you call by definition C, uh, A, B, C. Now you have all indices down in the killing, uh, in the structure constant, and you can move. Easily move. That this is totally an asymmetric. C, A, B, C is equal to our identity. C, A, B, C totally an asymmetric. You can just use the properties of the killing matrix. And it's anti symmetric in the two last indices. So you have just to move the anti symmetry in the first uh, two indices. And, and this is, of course, proportional to the epsilon tensor, so it's just the structure, for instance, of the SOP that are totally and isolated um, uh, structure constants. Okay, so by suitably rescaling the metric, the killing metric, uh, you will scale it to one, as it is said, you have then the Lagrangian L is equal one f minus one fourth is conventional times F A I J times F A I J. This is the kinetic term and the metal function plus and meta, which depends on psi and on the first of the reduce So we have now split the Russian in the metal part and the field part, and you get the field equations. Um, partial I of least if the L is without any innovation is always a total proportion with respect to just the original proportion of the 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 